Welcome, 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 welcome to another episode of 3D Boxing Podcast. It is good to be back. It is good to be back. Uh, we're going to get into uh, the TFP with Lopez fight because I got some interesting thoughts on this. Uh, I'm not mad at T.O. Uh, before we do, please like, share, and subscribe. Uh, please follow uh, 3D Boxing on all forms of social media. Uh, quick hits comes at you every day. Uh, eight times a day, either this channel or the other channel, Texas Boxing Scene. Please subscribe to that channel as well. We're going to be having a lot more content on that channel. I'm going to try to steer everything towards that direction um, and keep this as kind of a me back of channel. All right. Um, let's get into today's show. Uh, Tiafima Lopez versus Pedro Campa. Um, how many of you thought of Carlos Ocampo uh, when you heard this name? Um, all right, first, let's get into T.O. I'm not mad at T.O. for this fight. Um, he's coming off a terrible performance, a terrible loss against a guy he should dismiss, should have dismantled um, in George Cambosis. Um, you know, he was looking to get Cambosis out in the first round. Uh, that backfired. He ended up on the seat of his pants. Uh, and then the rest of the night, you know, not that he got blown out, um, but he lost, and, and nearly everyone agrees that he lost that fight. You know, it was competitive. Um, I, I said at that time, Cam Bosis had his Buster Douglas moment. He would never, ever replicate that moment, and he fought Devin Haney and got out of class. So I was right about that. Not that I'm glad about being right about that or anything. Um, but, you know, to get back to um, – T.O. now. Everything is messed up here, isn't it? I don't know, man. I don't know, man. Um, I, I, I get why he's taking a soft touch like Pedro Campo. And Pedro Campo is, is a soft touch. Um, it, it was a bad loss. It's a new weight class. Uh, he wants to go out. He wants to get a knockout. He wants to look spectacular. He wants to feel um, like he's the best fighter, in, you know, one of the best fighters in the world. And he wants to feel, you know, like he is that pound for pound cat that he was um, last year before he lost to Cambosis. You know, if it was nine months ago already. Um, when you pull up Pedro Campos box rack, right? Because no one really remembers him. He's got one kind of fight of note, and that was a draw to Abner Lopez. Well, who is Abner Lopez? Abner Lopez is a guy with a 27-10-1 record who basically loses to everyone. Um, everyone except for Campo. He lost to uh, Michael Azuski. He lost to Alex Sacedo, knocked out by Sacedo, knocked out by Jose Estepeta, uh, lost to Ivan Alvarez, uh, lost to Antonio Orozco, lost to, uh, knocked out by uh, Daniel Echeverria, and, and that's the kind of guy that he is. You know, I'm, I'm not throwing shade on him. Um, that's Admiral Lopez. Lopez fought a Campa to a uh, – see, I just did it. Fought Campa to a draw, and Campa is the guy that is fighting Tiffany Lopez. Um, Tiffany Lopez should get rid of him in five, six rounds. I, I don't think going from 135 to 140 is really going to present any challenge, especially at this fight. Um, I, I, I wanted to see – T.O. fight someone a little bit better, a little bit more established than Pedro Campa. Um, there are names out there. Um, you know, Alex Martin just fought on on, on the um, Virgil Ortiz cut. That's a name I would have liked. Um, what about Sandor Martin? Is that is that is that? It was, uh, there are other names. You know, um, O'Hara Davies. Right, I mean, uh, is ba is Barrios too big of a step? Robbie Davies Jr. is a name. There are names. You Eves Alissi. There are names you could have got. Yomar Alamo is a name you could have got. 
uh, Kenneth Smith Jr. is coming back. Kenneth Sims Jr. is coming back. There are some names out there that would be like, okay, that's an okay fight. Uh, but, you know, they wanted something real easy to ease them back into. And I'm not mad about that. I get it. I just, I, I think as good as T.O. is, he could be fine. I, look, I don't think T.O. is done. I think T.O. is going to be just fine. I think he could go on. I think at some point he'll win a belt at 140 and he'll go up to 147 and that's where he'll finish his career at, right? Um, I said when Devin and T.O. came up at 35, I said these guys are going to outgrow that division like yesterday. And, and we're seeing that now. You know, Haney's going to be there for a little while longer. He's got all the belts. Uh, but T.O.'s there. T.O.'s at 140. He's a big dude. He's going to be there for the foreseeable future. Um, and I, I think he'll do just fine. He's got explosive power. Look, he outboxed Lomachenko. Everyone thinks he's a bum. He outboxed the Matrix. Yes, he did. He was up seven rounds to nothing at one point, right? And then 8, 9, 10, 11, Loma kind of rallied. And then um, T.O. Stole the show, sealed the deal in the 12th round with a spectacular finish. He showed you everything you wanted to see in the young champion in beating Lomachenko, right? He shows you the boxing ability. He shows you the explosiveness. And then he shows you the heart in a fight that people thought was getting close. I didn't have a close on my card, but the fight people thought was getting close. You saw him bite down and, and, and win that last round to seal the fight, to seal the deal, you know, and, and, and win at least eight rounds in that fight. Um, I had it 10 too. People had it 7-5. So it is what it is. Um, but he he clearly won that fight because he clearly won the first six and the seven and the twelve. So he won the seven round. He wins the fight. It was on knockdown, so point deductions. Um, that being said, he's not done, right? Like he has he has the speed, he has the power, he has the boxing ability, right? Like I said, I've said when he was icing people with just pure athleticism and power. I said he's got flaws. He leaves himself so wide open to be countered, and that's exactly what we saw in the first round of the Cambosis fight, right? Like he throws his combinations, and they're so quick, right? And I, and I use the analogy as like it's like you know Barry Bonds in his prime, his hot spot, right? His his cold spot, where, where you could pitch him was sandwiched in between two hot spots, right? So if you miss high or low, he knocks it out of the park. I, and I kind of felt that way about Cambosis. Like you got to be a counter punch. You got to time it perfectly. You got to be accurate with it. But he can't be countered. It's just going to take the right fighter. And I still believe that. But you got to have power. You got to make him pay, right? Which I don't think Haney is the right guy for that. Um, so you have to have the power to make him pay, and you have to be accurate and have good timing. You have to have all those things. And Cambosis showed that he could do that. Now Cambosis was at uh, you know not in anywhere near his level in 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 the Cambosis fight, which is what I expected. And I, I think you know if Cambosis and uh, Teal ran it back, which I don't think they will because the weight class is different now. I think Teal would just fight him differently and outbox him. I, I think that was a disaster of a fight. Like I said at the time, I think that was uh, a, a Buster Douglas moment, right? Like Teal just, you know, didn't game plan. He had a long layoff. He was out of the ring. He wasn't taking this fight seriously. He was looking on to bigger and better things. Uh, you know, probably Josh Taylor, right? Was, I mean, was probably what he was looking at. And like, if he gets this fight, let, let's take, let's, let's, Josh Taylor didn't look good in his last fight. So when I say that Tiafimo Lopez could win, just remember that you scored Catterall over Taylor. Just remember that. And then ask yourself, who was, who did you rank higher, Cambosis or Catterall? Because the answer is probably Cambosis, right? And 99% of y'all scored the Catterall fight for Catterall, for the Catterall tail fight for Catterall. So when I say, that I think Lopez could beat Taylor. Remember, Catterall beat Taylor. Keep that in mind. That's all I'm saying. Uh, let me know what you guys think. Um, again, I, I think T.O. starts off, I don't want to say slow, but more patient, more methodical, picks it up and, and gets uh, Kampa out five, six rounds. I'll, I'll say six. I'll say TKO six for uh, TFU. Let me know what you guys think. Leave your thoughts, comments below. Please like, share, and subscribe. It is August 11th, 2022, from Texas to the world. Thank you, and God bless. Don't miss a tweet, post, story, or video. 3D Boxing is on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Hit the subscribe button now to stay inside the ring.